Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in today's video, we're going to give you our top 25 tips that every first time Virgin Voyager cruiser should know. Listen, are you about to go on your first Virgin Voyages cruise? In this video, we're going to give you the top tips and tricks and some of the things that's going to make your life yeah, a whole my, lot easier yeah. going upon your first Virgin Voyages cruise. We might have a couple of bonuses at the end. Y'all just going to have to stay tuned and wait for it. You ready for it? Let's go. Tip number one, when reserving your dining, please keep in mind that on embarkation day, do not reserve any dining before 7 p.m. Yes. Listen, learn from the mistakes of yeah. our ways. <laughs> our first cruise, we picked 6.30 as our embarkation dining slot. We missed sail away. Yep. Because sail away is between 6 and 6.30. It really gets the popping at 6.30. So that's when we had to leave to go to our dinner reservation. And we missed the free champagne, Free man. champagne. We've uh. missed the introduction of the cast. Yeah. So on our next cruise, which is in a few weeks, we know that 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. is our embarkation dinner reservations. Yep. But don't fret. There's food all over the ship. So yeah. you're not going to go hungry right, right. before that time. Exactly. We just didn't know. <laughs> Tip number two for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser is just know if you book in the Central Sea Terrace that those rooms are quite unspacious if that's a word that's not a word <laughs> but i'm just gonna make your word up it's right tight in there so please pack accordingly one advice we would give you is to bring a organizer that you can put Go over the, the door. door in the bathroom right because what ended up happening was because the bathroom is so small in there mm -hmm. we couldn't be in there at the same time <laughs> and you can't even you right. being in there by yourself you could not spread your right. things out so it just took so much longer right. to get ready because I couldn't even spread out makeup. It's yeah. so tight. So I had to end up getting ready over in the closet. Yeah, so yeah. I had to open up the door in the full length mirror. So I had to use that to brush my teeth, you know, get my beard right and all that. So we recommend that you go ahead and get the extra large sea terrace because that actually has a bigger bathroom. So we're gonna have a bigger one when we yeah, go nice. on our next cruise. So that at least we can be able to try it out and we've seen a lot of videos on it too. Yeah. Yeah. Bathroom is way better. Yeah. So yeah, just know it's probably going to, if you don't upgrade, it's going to frustrate your purpose. And also yeah. not just the central sea terrace, all of the sea terraces except the extra large sea terrace. Yeah. You will still have that same layout and them restrictions in the bathroom. Right. Tip number three, until they fix this on the app, they said it's coming and I hope it hurry up and comes. You can view the events that they're going to have, but until you get on board, you can't actually secure yeah. the events. So as soon as you get on board, book your events yeah because they book up fast yeah they book up fast <laughs> and in my case since i'm a travel agent i was able to book them on the app as soon as i was able to board but i heard i'm not completely sure that if you're not an agent or something like that or in one of the suites you have to actually go to guest services and get yeah. them to do it so my advice would be when you get to the terminal go ahead and click into their wi-fi yeah immediately it's called the mermaid or something like that log into their wi-fi mm -hmm. then go ahead and do it while you're sitting there if you can if you can't soon as you step foot on board if you saw our embarkation video right. you will see that everybody was making that hard right they yeah. already knew Yep. Do the hard <laughs> right, stand in line, get your events squared away, and that way you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the voyage. Exactly. Tip number four, guys. We highly recommend these dining spots when you get on board. The first right. one will be Gumbe. Oh, I thought you were going to say my favorite pig of Gumbe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to get there. You will get there. I'm going to get there. All right. So these are not in order of favorites. It's just the ones we want y'all to, to try out. Gumbe is number one. The atmosphere is everything. It if you, is everything. If you saw our vlog, you see that they was playing like the Method 90s. Man yeah, and... Method Man, the 90s music. So it was great. It's a great icebreaker. Yeah. And gets you social with other people as yeah. well. Because it is a social circle right. around the table. Then also the next would be Pink Agave, which is the Mexican restaurant because the steak and that corn is everything. It is not a game. No. All right, y'all, we got our steak. Man, she smells amazing. I think that's going to change your whole life. All 
of it is good. It is good. Yeah, the next thing would be is to go to the pizza place and to get the white pie piece. And I'm telling you. Yeah, I think it's, it's called Pretty Fine for yeah, White Pie or yeah. something like that. You just gonna see in parentheses, it's gonna say white pie. You're gonna know that's the right one. <laughs> <laughs> pretty fly for a white pie, that's it. Yeah, it is so good. So you wanna try that. The next thing that you wanna try is the wing. The what now? The wing! Delicious. They're at the social club. Yeah, at the social club. And then along with that, over at the social club, they have hot dogs. That's the name of Philly Steaks. I know it sounds kind of weird. It look weird too. So the good. hot dog has Philly toppings on it. Philly steak and cheese toppings on it. Mm -hmm. Got our wings. That's a Philly. Mm. But it's a Philly hot dog. <laughs> Interesting, right? Yeah. Bro. It is delicious. And that's also at the social club mm -hmm. as well. The next restaurant we want you guys to try is Extra Virgin, which is their Italian restaurant. The food was so good. I can't even remember the name of my dish. Yeah, something with squid yeah, in it. Yeah, some squid in it. Um, You had the prosciutto, and uh, that's, that's the, the name of it. And yes. then you had the... Uh, everything was good. Yes, everything. But I was so mad that night, I really didn't have an appetite that night, so yeah. I could, really couldn't get We were really it. snacking that day. Yeah, but the food was excellent. So yeah, try out Extra Virgin. Also, we want you to try try out the wake at breakfast. We did the wake for dinner. It was it was okay for us, but the wake for breakfast man them eggs that steak though and that got no french toast. Yeah, yeah. So, That's a perfect send off to yes. you just going home. Yes. Getting on the plane nice and full and nice and happy. Here's my steak and eggs. We rolled up on some more of that french toast and the queen got the same thing. Yeah. Yes, it was so good. It was so good. And to lead into the next thing is make sure that you get the room service breakfast. I agree. Because the French toast, the eggs, the potatoes, the hey, bacon, the bacon. I'll tell y'all the bacon. I'm telling you the bacon. They have the really good bacon. everything, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, uh, and for the room service, like the experience of how they do room service is just like, whoa, yeah. what's up? Yeah. Coffee and thermos. And, yeah. I mean, it's an experience. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And lastly... It's the ice cream. The presentation of the ice cream is everything. It is. Yeah. It is. It's, it's good. Good. And lastly, keep in mind that, um, and we glad that Virgin does this, is that they have what they call a waiting line. So if you've already been to a restaurant already, you can't actually book it twice. Right. So that gives everybody else an opportunity to try out the restaurant if you know why they're on that sailing so keep that in mind that if you want to do something twice you have to wait in what they call the waiting line and what i saw maybe 10 minute wait yeah People and, then if, and then if something wait. comes available they'll, they'll let you, you they'll they'll seat you and let you in tip number five stick to your embarkation time Listen, yeah yeah man they have a well-oiled machine and it's because there's no exceptions to their rules if your embarkation time is at 1.30 and you show up at 9.30, you're just going to be waiting in that line that says 1.30 embarkation until it's time for you to go ahead and go in and do your check-in process. Mm -hmm. They do not play with it. What they will allow you to do is, I think beginning at like 8.30, 8.45, you can drop your luggage off yeah. at the curb and then you can shuttle over to Bayside or any of the other places in Miami and hang out until it's that time. But until it's your time, right. don't show up right. early. The only people that have exception to being able to get on early is those that have booked into a suite yep. or those that have purchased one of the enhanced packages. At this very moment, it's called Splash of Romance. Romance. Yeah. It could be something totally different when you go to book. But right now, if you book that package, which is an enhancement to your cruise fare, yeah. you're able to go ahead and go through an enhanced boarding process, which yeah. means basically you're not VIP, right. but you get to go before the earlier embarkation time slot. So those are the only exceptions. Don't come because you will wait and they're not even, go they, they might give you some water, but I don't think they're going to give you no water. They're not going to feel sorry for you because they're, they're not going to let you flow in. Yeah. Tip number six for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser. Mm -hmm. Here is some entertainment that we would recommend to you Holly. to try when you get on. But there's a lot of entertainment, but these are the ones we recommended. The mm -hmm. first one would be karaoke. Karaoke is insane. We <laughs> had so much fun. So first... We did, when we was on the last cruise, we did karaoke, just me and the queen. You saw the vlogs, mm -hmm. you know, it was an epic fail, but epic fun. Yeah. Right. It's supposed to be epic fail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mad that you can't read. <laughs> <All by myself. laughs> 
<laughs> so we had so much fun. And then the next day we met Jules and Denise and another couple as well we met. I can't remember their names. Yeah. And we went back in and we had karaoke <laughs> again. And it just went to a whole nother level. So and we, then before we left. Yeah, we did it us, again. We, we did it again. again. Us four did it <laughs> yeah. again. It was so much fun. But they also have a social hour where like the entire ship can get in on the karaoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we missed that. But we had the private sessions. Insane. And it's included. Yeah. People are asking that question. It's included. The next thing we will recommend is the Never Sleep Alone show. <laughs> like we told you guys in the vlog, you haven't seen the vlog, you would, you can see a little bit of it. You see a little bit of it right here. It's what you think, and it's not what you think. But it is. But it is what you think, but, but it's, it's not. It is very fun. So when you walk in, they're going to ask you, what is your level of adventure? adventure. So... Just know anything closer to 10, I'm going to say that, you're going to you're gonna be on the front. So the further you go back on the scale, further back to one, they're going to put you back further. I say stay at about a six or a seven. Yeah. It gets you close it enough, gets you close enough so but you can not see. on the floor, so you're not going to get But we calls. can't guarantee that they're not going to call you at a six or a seven. <laughs> but it's fun. It is fun. The next thing that we recommend is the puzzle competition. That was so much fun. We wish we could have recorded it more, but of course, we can't put a puzzle together and record it at the same time. Yeah, and then you try to be but, mindful of your right. people too. So. It was hella intense, but I had a ball. Yeah. It was, <laughs> so definitely if they have that on the um vigilant lady, did I say that right? Value lady. <laughs> Next month, I definitely want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I, had, uh, yeah. <laughs> I felt it coming. Cause he been calling this the vigilant lady. Yeah, yeah. But y'all know me. I'm a, I'm gonna mess it up. I might not be able to say it right, but I'm gonna tell it to you right. If that makes sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> the next day that uh, <laughs> we want you guys to try out is Scarlet Night. Where the whole ship becomes red, everybody put on their good get up and be grown and sexy out there on the water. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the pool party. <laughs> it's insane. I partied so hard that I forgot where I was. I was just like, I was gone. But it's going to be a lot to see there. I'm going to let you know. It's yeah. going to be a lot to see there. I'm not going into any detail, but it's a lot. Did he, yeah, I just, think you need to go yeah. into detail because there's so many speculations going on. And we had this conversation on board because right. we all walked right. into this not knowing what that experience was going to be. And we still don't even know what Scarlet we Night still is. Don't we don't know, what, know what, what it is. is. But a lot of people that look like us, that was our age, they were like, you know, we got on and we were looking for like this overly sexualized, charged atmosphere mm -hmm. because this is what we heard. And we all came to the conclusion that every time you hear adult. the word adult only, only. Yep. immediately mm -hmm. you go into this overly sexualized, free for all mm -hmm. kind of right. atmosphere. And none of us experience that. Will we say that that kind of thing does happen? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's, it's on there. Have y'all checked out like yeah. the stuff that goes on on Carnival? Like, yeah, yeah. That it happen happens Carnival? Yeah. everywhere. It happens with the kids on board. It happens without. The only, like we talked about this too, the only place that we know that actually advertises that like is Temptation, Temptation Resorts. Yeah. Yeah. So you already know that's a highly sexually charged atmosphere before you go. Yeah, but <laughs> but here I didn't see yeah like the real facts. We either saw couples mm -hmm. or we saw singles, like just getting it in, having mm -hmm. a good time. Not getting it in like that, but, but like having it. Yeah. It was yeah. all fun. Like I never saw. Now would you? We did see like skippy bikinis mm -hmm. on men and women. Yeah, like you you would yeah, see you things see that. like that because yeah. they don't have to have discretion. Because the kids ain't because going. there's no kids on board. But other than that, we didn't see anything. Like real fact, like I told you, I was hoping to see something, <laughs> but you didn't see. Nothing. But I didn't see nothing. <laughs> Cause I like to see people working. So you was out there like this. <laughs> I like to see people move. I'm a people watcher. I like to see people in their element. You know, none of it. Like, um, but like I said, not to so, say yeah. that it doesn't happen. So but, at Scarlet Night, you. But gonna, it's not for the proof. Right. So at Scarlet Night, you're gonna see a lot of dancing. It's gonna be shows. You're gonna see eye, eye, glowing eyeballs, a big old octopus. People gonna be <laughs> yeah. back flipping in the pool. That's people a lot. gonna be lit, be drunk. I mean, you're gonna see a you're little. You're gonna bit. see everything. So you're gonna I, see thugs. You're gonna yeah, see yeah. LGBTQIA community. Oh, like you're, you're gonna, gonna see, see you're gonna see everybody. everybody. 
So I recommend to take a look at it from upper deck so you can yeah. <laughs> get a look at like what's going on and then come back down on the lower deck they were deck and get it in i'm telling you yeah like even us we yeah. we started in the back yeah because we were like we gotta feel this like what is going <laughs> on here like it's a lot to take in at one time then the next thing you know we're standing on the side of the pool like yeah, just uh, getting uh, it in uh, like, uh, and uh, then they turned uh. on to the reggae and yep. i was like whoa wait a minute yeah it, it got intense it, it was, is would i do it again i might have to bow out early because they're not gonna kill me because <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> And then after Scarlet Night, it's the club. And the club just... It's an extension. Yeah, it just continues. Yeah, we was in there, yeah. I have a picture of my husband that I can't show. He couldn't even fully get undressed because he was so tired. Yeah. He was sitting in the chair with his with his button up on it <laughs> and his boxes because he couldn't get I was he was just like I'll tell y'all man, Scarlet what the Night, heck yeah. <laughs> Supercharged atmosphere. Yeah, super. Tip number seven. Study the app. Like as yeah, soon as man. you get your booking reservation number, start going into the app and really studying it. If yeah. they have the events lined up, look at them. Read about what they entail. Because as you know, Virgin Voyages is a new cruise line to a lot of us. Right. So a lot of the things that they have on board is just so different yeah. that you have no idea what they are. Read up on it. Look at the different things that they have on board. Right. Look at the <clears throat> restaurants. Look at the menus. All of that stuff is on the app. So you can start to get a footing and a feel how things are. Also do it for the sake of... We learned that the app is very segmented. Yeah, very segmented. So you will go somewhere looking for food thinking that, okay, restaurants, restaurant, restaurant. There are other places where you will find food within the yeah, same app. Right. And I'm like, why don't you just put them in the same place? Yeah. Just please study the app and read it. And when you're on board, they're going to send you messages. Yeah. Read those. They have good little nuggets in it. It even yeah. tells you on disembarkation day, the best time to get off if you don't want to run into crowds. Right. And do the survey. Exactly. Yeah, because you don't want to be like we were on day one, like trying to learn that app. It was like so frustrating. It was frustrating. Yeah, so I wish that we did start at home first. So yeah, I'm telling you, study it because if not, it's going to be a level of frustration. Yeah. yeah. And also be patient with the app. We <laughs> learned that while we were docked in Miami, the service was very like in and out, in and out yeah. on the app. And I think it was competing with your cell service, that... The then city. what was going on? But as soon as we sailed out, the app became flawless. Seamless, yeah. It was seamless. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Tip number eight for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser. And this one is a good one. We yeah, actually yeah. learned this tip from one of the waitresses service. at Razzle Dazzle. She was like, versus trying to depend on that app to find out what the events is going on, like we told y'all, it's all segmented. She said, go to guest services. They do a printout every single day. It's my easier. And she was so right. It's like a menu. Like, right. you just look at everything overall. All in one. And it, it highlights all the most popular, the best things that are... Mm -hmm. It's not everything that's going on, but it's majority of what's going on. Yeah. It's on that it paper. made it so much easier. Yeah, it did. It made it so much easier. And that's at guest services to get the paper. And you can also ask your room attendant to put one out yes. for you every day. Yes. Because once he saw it in our room, yeah. he began to put them in our room for us. Yes. So that was good. Tip number nine. And this is going to really <laughs> come into play for us that are like carnival cruisers. Like yeah. we're used to that cruise line really like introducing the fun and really do, being the icebreaker for you being with the people that you're going to be with for five, seven days, however long right. you're on the sailing. We recommend because this cruise line really allows you to just be and there is no introduction that makes you turn to your neighbor like yeah. they would at church or get to know everyone or except like on, for or on a cruise ryan rose yeah or <laughs> you know except for when you're like in competitions together stuff like that other than that everybody is really like minding their own business in their own space right go and start to mingle with people go mm. where they are like if people are gathered around the hot tub 
perch yourself over there. Yep. If they're hanging out by the pool, you know, just go in there and just small talk, have a conversation. If you're an introvert like we are, sometimes that can be a little like, <gasps> yeah, but, but it works. But it works. Like yeah. just a little small talk. Like I was looking at something on my phone laughing and I peeked at the girl beside me kind of was like, was she laughing at? And so I just showed her. She was from um, Canada. Yeah. It was a little bit of a like, uh, but fun is fun. Yeah. And we got together. We had a good old time. And yeah, that's how we was able to connect with people. We connected with people going down to the pool. Yeah. And that's how we was able Excursions. to meet. Excursions. Yeah, so that's how we met the other couple. And then we met... Mm -hmm. um, the puzzle. We met Jules and them. Um, doing doom buggies. Uh, doing the doom buggy. So, yeah. Make yourself available to make connections. Yeah. Tip number 10, y'all. Um, Lynette already kind of alluded to a little bit. I'm sorry. Every single day, they're going to send you a survey in real time so you can let them know exactly how they are servicing you and are you satisfied right so that way if they're not they can course correct to make sure that your trip is that much enjoyable so please participate in those surveys it's going to come as a notification on your phone it's like a three minute long yeah survey. it's like yeah you do it real quick to let them know which i think is excellent i get to tell you how i feel in real, real time and they course correct in real time in real time so too. if you tell them that something isn't right you might see a pop-up that happens on your phone to chat not with customer service on land customer service that's on the ship with you right what's going on how can i fix this because usually you don't get a feedback survey until you leave your trip <laughs> i'm not saying you're wrong for that <laughs> right. but i'm like what we hey, gonna but, do now right and then you gotta wait 30 days <laughs> so participate in that survey highly recommend highly tip number 11 and this is more of a mental preparedness that yeah, we man. need y'all to do yeah this cruise line don't tell you Nathan. Nathan. When I say they don't tell you Nathan, I mean nothing. Let's go ahead for the people in the back that don't understand. <laughs> what we mean by that is other cruise lines, when they're getting ready to sail away, there's a big announcement. There is a big hoopla about it. When it's time to get off in port, you've reached your destination. There's an announcement made oh, telling you we've yeah. reached here. You're back on board. Time is this. This ship is totally silent right. of announcements <laughs> right and we're talking about speaker loudspeaker announcements nothing nothing <laughs> you don't know when you pull off until you feel it yep. <laughs> you don't know when you're docked until you look outside yep. when you pull off from a port i'm like how we know if we left That's somebody not, right like <laughs> there is nothing telling you i loved it because it made you become an adult about your vacation like there's yeah. nobody spoon feeding you information there's no one telling you okay it's time for you to come down to the gangway and get off in bimini no your app yeah. told you that yeah. we here yeah it, it's it, it time was, to get off <laughs> it, it was a little bit of a culture shock getting off a carnival though because that's what you used to so i'm yeah. like i'm like is they gonna tell us anything no. And then the app said, bzz, bzz. you can it get off. And look at nobody said, you can get off at X time and be back at X time. I was like, oh. You get on the elevator, the elevator is, is lit up and it and tells you. the same thing. Yep. Okay, you need to be back on. You can grab a towel or two. Yeah. <laughs> and you going on about your business. Like, it makes you a real adult. adult. It's like being in the airport. Right. Like, nobody's going to tell you, hey, uh, yo, Lynette, your flight about to leave, <laughs> y'all. Nah, no, uh-uh. They just going to leave. They just going to leave, yep. That's how it is. The only announcement we heard the entire time is that they had some kind of smoke issue in one yeah. of the restaurants. <laughs> And the captain came on and said, we need such and such team down in restaurant. And I got spooked out because if, if yeah. you're on the loudspeaker, it must be bad. Because y'all ain't said nothing in the last past two days. We ain't seen no been officers. Solid. We you haven't. Been solid. It's been solid on this bad boy. Yeah. But after a while, it became like, oh, okay, I get it. This is dope. But yeah, carnival people, it's going to be a culture shock for you. Man. Yeah. But that's why we like study that app. Yeah. And look at it yeah. off. Ton. But yes. I will say what it does is it eliminates crowding. Yeah. Because you don't have someone say, oh, yeah, it's time to get on board. And everybody, no, people just What's leave. What's with that music? It's me. <laughs> you know how it, you know how football? Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. It's like. Sound effects not included. Oh, they're included. Because you're going to need them on this ship because you ain't going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> they solid right but you, that's a good point you made that yeah getting off at ports made us you just walk you out off. And, and walk, walk right off. off you ain't sitting and waiting in no long line to get off because they made an announcement yeah 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 that was dope so it made you flow yeah 
Getting off the same way. Yep. Tip number 12 for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser is we recommend on embarkation day mm. to really walk around and study the ship. We make mention of a little bit in our review that things are somewhat hidden, especially like the restaurants. You go one way uh -huh. and it's tucked around this corner or it's tucked around that corner. And then you go back. Yeah. There. So we highly recommend you not trying to find Gumbe when it's time to go to Gumbe. We highly recommend not trying to find Sleep Alone when it's time to go to sleep alone because you're gonna be all over the place. Where you find that? And you late. Matter of fact, on the first day we was late to uh to, to pick a guy to pick a guy bay because we were trying to figure out where pick a guy bay was because you have pick a guy bay was tucked in like round where like a guest services yeah it's right where guest services so you is, walk right. in and you're like this right. is guest services and they're like no just keep going keep on going and you're just like and go through the what? lights <laughs> yeah and go through the lights I'm thinking I'm going to a club <laughs> like, yeah so yeah so we highly recommend. And we say that in, even in our carnival videos, the study of ship. But this one, you really have to because walk there's in. no ship map. It, you can't look at the wall and it's, and it says you're here. Mm -hmm. No, it's just gonna say X on X floor, X on this floor, X on that floor. So you know you're and, on the floor. And then you start walking, you're gonna start seeing arrows. Everything is arrows, and someone's gonna be pointing like this, and you'd be <laughs> like, well. Well, which way do I go? <laughs> so we about to fork of the road. Yeah, it, it's so, a lot. So yeah, walk around. I'd rather for you to be frustrated on day one than be frustrated on day two, three, four, five, or six. Oh, how many day you'll sail on this? And then keep in mind, like we're a person that like I study ships. This is kind of my thing. This ship is way bigger in person than you can ever imagine it being. Right, it is. I thought it was like your carnival magics or anything like that. Mm -mm. Mm. This ship is massive. Huge. Like, I'm not trying to compare it to like your Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Sea. Ain't no way. Yeah, no, Nowhere no, near no, no, that. No, no. I'm not even sure because I haven't seen the Mardi Gras in person, but it's very comparable to like the Prima and things like Those ships are huge. Huge. Ours is, that ship was just as big and you don't realize it until you're on board. Yup. Tip number 13, this is something that happens and this can happen for you two ways. If you are prepared to pay for your cruise in full at the time of booking, yes. you have a three hour window to take advantage of a 10% discount. Yeah, my. Let, let, let's just go ahead and say that real slow. You can get 10% off the price if you pay it in full. This is the two ways that you could pay that baby off in full. You know, go ahead and reach on in that checking account, savings account, pull that on out of there. Yeah, Do my. it that way. But you also, if credit allows, you have uplift. Yep. You can go ahead and do the uplift financing. Most of the time, they always advertise that you can do it for no percentage. Um, APR, all and that good zero stuff. Zero down. No, zero down. Yep. And you just pay it back to yourself or just take it from your checking account, pay it back off, save the 10%. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> when you look at that saving and it's <clears throat> like, oh, I just saved like another three, three four hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally, totally something worth exploring. Yep. And remember, it has to be done within. Three hours. Within three hours oh, and yeah. you have to do it at least, it's either 120 days or 180 days prior to sailing. So yeah. if you're doing the last minute cruise, it's not gonna work for you. It's not gonna work, right. But yeah, do that, plan ahead, say you 10%. Tip number 14 for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser mm -hmm. is on debarkation day. Listen at me good. <laughs> I'm telling you, and the app on the ship is gonna tell you too, that debarkation, starts well supposed to be over around like 10 45 mm -hmm. but however the closer you wait until like 10 45 the rush starts to get greater so the app is going to come and tell you that hey if you want to get off the ship and it to be smooth you're going to want to leave earlier mm -hmm. so if you want to beat the rush go before 10 45. we got on the ship probably around about 30 around about 9 9 30 mm -hmm. and there was people out there but it was still smooth we felt like the longest time that we spent was at the guy at customs because he was asking us about our experience on the ship so we was over there talking to him for about five or ten minutes and i was like and i was like you got like a line back there sir but i was like you custom so i ain't fit i ain't fit to argue. <laughs> right. like i say i ain't about to argue with you <laughs> right so what happened was the attendant that was behind, I don't know if you saw it, they sent the next person. 
That's why I started what that's why I was they sent to this person like like you you ain't standing here fitting to talk to them about anything that ain't pertaining to them as far as customs wise. We didn't talk we, we ain't talk about how you we don't I don't care. Next. Next. <laughs> That's how that works. I with appreciated us. the conversation yeah. though, because he wanted it from our perspective. Right. Because he was like, when they get off of this ship, it'd be like, boy, we had a time. <laughs> but you don't know what that time was. So we had right. a time like, nah, it's not like yeah. what you think. It's a party though. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the time that they probably hate. Yep. <laughs> it's a party though. But going how, along with what my husband said, the day prior to getting off the ship, the app, like we told you. Yes. Look at the app, read it. It's going to say, hey, you're getting off tomorrow. Sarah, to see you go. Go ahead and select what time yes. you want to get off. Yes. So you get to choose what time you want to step off the ship. And then when you select it the next day, it'll start to give you little reminders. Oh, go ahead and get breakfast because you have an hour and a half before you get off. Yep. Very cool. And then also, just like with Carnival, they do have the where you can leave your bags out. Mm-hmm. And they come and get them and they take them down. When you go down to get to um, get off the ship, you go with a little section, get your bag, then go through customs. So it, that part was... It's very much the same. Very much the same. Yeah. But we took all our stuff off. Yeah. Tip number 15. If you, yeah, my... if you book one of these cruises on Virgin Voyages, you're probably like, okay, you're talking about the reservations for dinner and shore excursions. When can I book these? Listen, I know, cause even being a travel agent, I love to experience things on the other end because I like to see how does it work? Like, when are you gonna tell me I have to do these things? 45 days, if you're not booked in a suite yeah. or anything like that, 45 days prior to your sailing is when you can hop on the app, do your reservations for dining and your shore excursions. Yes. If you're in a suite, you can do it 60, 60 days. days prior to your sale. So those that are in suites have priority over everyone mm -hmm. that's on the ship. So if you get on there on the 45th day and you're like, wait a minute, all the good excursions are gone, blame the rock star people. They got them. <laughs> but I didn't have that problem. Nah. Like I didn't book my excursions until probably like 15 days before we sailed. And right. we had one of the most popular ones and it was fine. So I'm not telling you to wait, but just don't panic. Make sure yeah. that when you get the notification that it's time for you to get on and do your reservations, do it then. Yes. All right, tip number 16 is the queen already told you that you must arrive at your appropriate check-in time oh, yeah. because they will not let you in. But also we wanted to let you know if you are in a rock star suite, there are actually a whole new different entrance for you. You get to walk right on past people who ain't <laughs> and be able to get your VIP treatment. So that's it's like having go with entry. <laughs> right. And when you over the line and you see that, you be like, darn man, I wish I had a VIP stand. Yeah, the suite. Yeah. So, but you know, you gotta have sweet money though. So <laughs> it ain't cheap. So yeah, if you got the rock star suite, be sure to go down to the VIP interest and not the regular check-in interest. Exactly. Tip number 17. I've heard this time and time again. What are the benefits of booking one of the suites on Virgin Voyages? Their suites are broken up into two different categories. You have rock star suites. Yep. Then you have mega rock star suites. So depending on which ones that you book depends on which category you fall into. Right. I'm going to give mm -hmm. you the benefits of the mega and the regular rock star. I'm gonna look down because I can't remember this off yeah. the top of my head. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me, I'm like, copy, paste. Yeah. These are your benefits because I cannot remember it. Just know that if you book any of the suites, you blanket it across the board, you will get VIP entrance yep. onto the ship. You will also get access to Richard's rooftop terrace. Like it's, it's just an, nice over there too, it's an exclusive area that only the yeah. Rockstar Suites can go into. Yeah. And they also have like their private sail away parties, different stuff like that. It's nice, but it's so secluded from everybody. Like right. I like to be around people when I'm on vacation, but it's but a good little perk. I want to go over there. Yeah, but it's a good little perk, <laughs> especially if you just want to be up on the decks. Right. You ain't got to fight with chairs and none of that stuff. Right. Because they have plenty. All right, the benefits <laughs> of the mega rock stars quarters. I'm going to read them to you. VIP interest. I talked about that. Priority booking. We yeah. talked about that. So 60 days prior, you can do your reservations for dinner 
and your excursions. We talked about that. You have 24-7 access to your own rock star agent, yeah. which basically means if you're used to going to all-inclusive resorts, sometimes you'll have a concierge or a butler service that's all around the times of night. That's what they have there. Of course, I talked about the access to the Richest Rooftop Lounge. They have a pre-dinner cocktail hour every day. So yeah. every day you have your own cocktail hour where you can go and yeah, get free flowing man. drinks. They have a <laughs> daily bar tab of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages up to $25 per drink. Yes. Then you have an allotment of two bottles of wine per day up to $90, $90. Yeah. per bottle. Right. You also <clears throat> have premium Wi-Fi. Yeah. See, you get free Wi-Fi on the ship, which is good Wi-Fi. Don't anyway, get it Anyway, yeah, that's good, yeah. You have the premium yeah, Wi-Fi into the price of your cruise fare. You also have transportation. So you have, we saw that they had blacked out SUVs as their private transfer yeah, services. When we were at port, I can't guarantee you that's what it's going to be. But also you have free valet parking. So they will park your vehicle across the street in their own private parking garage right. for free when you in the mega Rockstar quarters. Yeah, my Rockstar quarters, which means that you're in those cabins that are like the seriously, the brilliance. I'm not going to name them all because yeah. at the top of my head, I don't know them. But you know what you book. Also, with the Mega Rockstar Suites, you also get a in-room bar as yes. well. And they replenish it. Now, let's talk about the other Rockstar quarters, which is just a regular Rockstar. You get all of that, except there are some differences. Yeah. You don't get the transfer services included yeah. in that. You don't get the daily bar tab. tab. With the bar in your room, they don't come and replenish it. So what you can do, this is what I heard, <laughs> is on day one, if there is some kind of liquor or anything in there that you don't drink, Tell them to take that out, replace it with what you do drink. Yep. I've heard that they have to get an exception to that because, of course, they probably bring you like a rum, a gin, a tequila, you know, to mix it up. If you want to take all of that out and you have one type of liquor, yep. they do have to have an ex get an exception for it, but I heard it works. So do that. Other than that, you have the same benefits. Yep. Tip number 18 for the first time Voyaging Voyages Cruiser is you do not need luggage tags. I know. If you it's are weird. Yeah. If you, <laughs> and while I'm there, you don't have to print off a boarding pass either. Like with Carnival, just before you go, a few weeks before, you print off your boarding pass and your luggage tags. Virgin Voyage don't have those. So you're going to feel a little naked. When you go, the only thing you're gonna have in your hand really is gonna be your bags and your app and your app and your and your passport because you gotta have that in your hand too. But you can bring your bags to the porter as early as 8 a.m. The queen alluded to that a little early in the video. You can bring it to them at 8 a.m. and they also provide shuttle services there that they can take you to the what's it called the Bayside Market, the Bayside Marketplace. So you can have some time out there before time get on the ship. I'm like not we, saying it's free. Right, it's a shuttle service. It's yeah. self-service. <laughs> yes, yes. But it still beats having to sit and wait at the terminal. Cause like we told you, if you arrive before your check-in time, you ain't gonna be able to get on the ship, baby. Mm -mm. So keep that in mind. But it is a good option to be able to be able to drop your luggage off yeah. over there, just in case you want to do something else and don't want to have to take it around. If you, especially if or you got to hang out at the airport, right? Because we came in so yeah. early. That we just yeah, hung out at the airport. Yeah, so I think it's, like you said, it's a perfect option if you're flying in early. Yeah. Yeah. Tip number 19. Let me go behind my shield. <laughs> Virgin Voyages does require a passport. Yes. I know you probably heard different things all over the internet. I'm a travel agent and I have heard it from agents. Like, which one is it? Yeah. I'm going to stick with what's in writing. Yes. And in writing, they really want you to have your passport. And even in a check-in service, there is no option to, I'm bringing a birth certificate. Nope. The only option is scan your passport. passport. Yep. When you get on board, passport's ready. There isn't anyone alluding to the fact that there is an exception to the rule. Although, as a travel agent, I've also been told in extreme emergencies. Yeah. See, here's this is where I tell people 
we not going to travel this far and hope that, we that you're, you are in the criteria of extreme they don't because they don't tell you what that is. Yeah, they don't tell you what that means. I don't know if that means you have applied for your passport. You can prove that you applied and you're approved and it, it just hasn't come. come. Yeah. Or you can't get it because maybe your, your, your records are so screwed up that you're having a hard time getting it. We not going to play them kind of games. No. Passport only. Yes. <laughs> Come with your passport. We, like we said, this costs too much money for you to be playing around. For you to just hope that they would take your birth certificate. You're trying to risk over... They start at 1600 and on up. Yeah. You're willing to risk that to go when you can go and get your passport for less than $300? Right. Just get the passport. Yeah, get the passport, man. Tip number 20. On Virgin Voyages, they do not have like the sign and sale card like they have on Carnival. They have what they call the, the band, band that goes around your wrist. So like if you're a husband and wife, mine will say something different than hers. I think mine was a whole eye sailor and I can't even remember what you were. Ahoy. Ahoy sailor and I can't remember what you were Feeling saying. naughty. Yeah. Oh, you was naughty too. Oh, you was naughty too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, that band was perfect. I felt like it was out the way. It was very convenient because it worked your room that you put up against your little keypad thing they had. You ready? Yep. Is this how we get in? All right, I heard it. You used it when you went to the bar or anything you had to purchase on the ship. Mm -hmm. Also, it worked when we said Bimini Beach Club, which was a game changer. Yes. Uh, also, you can use it in the casino. But keep in mind, if you decide to use it in the casino, and the only way we know this is because we went to the cage, went, we went to, the cage to find out how to use it <laughs> um, in the casino. And she was like, if you use it, it's going to charge you 7%. Right. Yeah. So if you don't want to be charged 7% in a casino, you're going to have to spend cash. cash. So, and also it helps you to get on and off of the ship. And again, it's called the band. It's a life changer. If you've been on Carnival Cruise and you know you got the lane around there, it's flopping Messing everywhere. Messing up your outfits. You know, so yeah, you have the band. Also, it gives you access to Richard's rooftop. But the richest rooftop band is a different color than everybody else's. Of course it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> Make us feel like peasants. And it also tracks you along the ship as well. So yeah. if you have to have deliveries or anything like right. that. Like because they have the, the infamous shake, shake, shake the champagne. Mm -hmm. And you shake your app and the champagne comes to you. But yeah. it works through the band. Look, my husband, it was so funny. Yeah, I did. <laughs> he accidentally shook his phone. He said, why are all these bottles, bottles on, on here? Phone? I'm like, what the? I said, this is what happens when you don't study your app. <laughs> I said, oh, they think you're ready for champagne. Yeah. He said, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> Tip number 21. This is a crucial one. Yes. As a travel agent, when I received them, I immediately put breaks because this right here can buck up your entire app experience, yeah, which app. means you're not going to get in. Every person that goes on Virgin Voyages has to provide an email. We cannot share email addresses mm. on Virgin Voyages. I know us wives love to do everything for our husbands, <laughs> and we like to put our address in their stuff because we want to do everything for them. He going to have to be an adult on this cruise and have his own, own email. email address. Mm attached to his reservation right. and the reason for that being is whatever email address you provide when you register or when you make your reservation either yourself or a travel agent is the email address that you have to use to log into the app yep. and that app is everything to you while you're on board yep. there is no sharing of that email because of that app it is unique to the person so Use your own email. Everyone has to have a separate email. If not, you're not going to be able to get on the app. Because what's going to happen is, guess one's going to log in. Guess two is going to try to log in. Yeah. And one's going to be locked out. Yep. One at a time. That's how you got to do it. Tip number 22. Um, we always tell people, we even tell our accountable people this, is that when you get on a ship, take advantage of the safe in the room. And that that's the time to store away all the valuables, whether it's your wallet, your keys, your passport, or any valuable things, your laptop, anything that you don't want to get stolen when you leave out your room, 
which I don't think they're going to steal nothing on there. I didn't uh, feel yeah. nowhere near threatened mm -hmm. that anything was going to be taken, but I still do it. It's people of yeah, people. Right. So be sure to secure all your valuables inside of your safe when you get in your room. And the one thing that makes me feel good about the safes, I know people say, oh, they have keys to them. They can get into them. I can tell you from prior experiences on cruise ships is that if you have problems with your safe, there is a person that has to come and be with another person to actually get master access to the safe in order to get this situation rectified. Right. When I saw that, I said, oh yeah, the yeah. chances of somebody going in using a master key is slim to none because it yeah. was almost <clears throat> like, I used to work in a bank branch. We could not go into the vault alone. We had to have two people in the vault at the same time right. to verify what you were doing. And it was like big brother. I felt like that same situation was happening with the safe. Yeah, because we had asked the room stewardess, we were like, we can't get in um, the safe. Somebody had purposely the, yeah. had it so that it wouldn't close. Close, yeah. And he was like, I can't, uh, do, I can't anything, do anything, but I have to call. And when the master key comes, I have to come back and supervise him. And we had to be present. And we had to be present. Mm -hmm. So he was like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we said, come back later. Uh, yeah, don't even worry about it right now. <laughs> Tip number 23. If you are not a person that like really like studies the map and the graphs and the keys of different cruise ships, you may not know this, but if you book on any of these ships, I'm not going to tell you not to book on level eight, but let me prepare you for what is going to probably be your experience on level eight. Level seven below you is where most things are. Galleys, different things like that. If you're forward facing, then you are right above, I think is one of the clubs or something like that. And then also those lifeboats are right there. So usually when you like go in and you want to make a reservation, you'll see something that says limited view sea terrace or something like that. They're on deck eight. Yeah. Because usually if you go out to your sea terrace, you're going to be looking directly <clears throat> at or in between the um, life rafts. So go ahead and start at nine. And that way you can really kind of give yourself a buffer between that. Am I saying something's wrong with eight? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. But go ahead and know that it may be a little bit noisier. You may be able to hear some things while you're trying to sleep. And also your view may not be what you expected it to be, depending on That's what the most position right you are on is the your ship. view. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Keep that in mind. Tip number 24 for the first time Virgin Voyages Cruiser is they have secret menus. They do. But we found out about the secret <laughs> menus by the waitress at Razzle Dazzle telling us that there was a secret menu. When you go to any of the restaurants, ask them. Awesome. We're not sure if all of them have it. She told us to ask for it if we came back to Razzle Dazzle that night. So we do know that Razzle Dazzle has a secret menu. And that was breakfast. I don't yeah. know about dinner. I don't yeah, know. so you're just going to have to ask. It's, it's no. All of it is a secret. My travel agent you trade it ain't even tell me this. Yeah, so we just let you know the secret about the secret. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. Basically. <laughs> Tip number 25, which could be a crucial one if you fall into this category. Virgin Voyages does match loyalty statuses for certain cruise lines. Yeah, man. That, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link below because it's just too many to name. But if you are Carnival, for instance, they match your diamond and platinum. Right. And your other ones, basically the higher tiers of those ones is where they start the loyalty match. It does have benefits that come along with it. I will pin and put a link below yes. so that you can read up on it yourself. Yeah. Way too much to it's put into yeah. this um, video verbally. But it's great that they will match it because we've seen people even ask questions about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's like, like getting price matched at the grocery store, man. You ain't lying. <laughs> Boom. Say, level me. Yeah. <laughs> Take advantage of that loyalty match if you are there. All right, as promised, at the end of the video, we said we would give you a few bonus tips. All right, so the first bonus tip, a lot of people be wondering, um, if I'm a solo cruiser, should I do this trip? If I'm a couple, should I do this trip? So we just want to kind of give you the demographic age of the people who are on the ship majority, which is about 85% of the people mm -hmm. who sail Virgin Voyages between the age of 34 and 62. So that kind of gives you a great range that you ain't too old or too young or too young 
to do Virgin Voyage and we always say, please try it. And it was like a 50-50 split between right. couples and yeah. solo cruisers. Right. It was really like a definitive line, like right, right. down the middle. Right. So yes, case you wanted, the ages you're going to see between 34 and 62 is what you're going to see. And that's so true. It was true. It was true. And it was a vibe. Yes. The next bonus, as promised, my husband alluded to it a little bit just now, but do not go by what everyone says. Try it for yourself. If yeah. there is something that interests you about this, like you can't stop watching it, you yeah. can't stop researching it. Like, what is it that's intriguing about this? It's kind of your clue just to go ahead and check it out. I'm always that person. Like, if something keeps doing like this to me, maybe it's just my cue to just go ahead and, and figure it out. out. Right. If you hate it, you just never have to do, do it, it again. again. Right. But at least you will have an experience for yourself because there's nothing more like, uh, than taking someone else's experience or what they have said about something and making it your the reason of why, your reason of why, why you don't want to do it, it or yeah. the reason why mm -mm, not going to yeah. do it. Just go ahead and try it. it yeah. Like we said, it could be something you totally hate. It could be something that you totally are like, Wow, I just yeah. didn't know that I could just have this much fun in an atmosphere that's just not so familiar to me. Right. All right, if you have enjoyed this video, you will want to check out this video next when we did the review of the Scarlet Lady. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.